Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. A little bit of a different view today because we're gonna be working on a piece of furniture. Now, this is already, just happened to already be stripped down. So it's all ready to go. It's been wiped down, washed off, cleaned off, and dried. Um, just so that you know some of the prep work ahead of time. I did not sand it though. It I would have painted over paint or something. It was already um, down like this. I think maybe somebody had gotten ready to do it. Did all that work for me? Thanks. Um, and really, what what we want to do today is is this. I get a lot of people that see furniture done in all of the multitude of bright, bold colors. And they really love that look. They don't know how to use it in their home, um, but they really love the thought of and, and love the look of a lot of colors together. But their home is much more neutral. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a neutral piece, but we're gonna use a lot of colors. So neutral doesn't have to be colored less. It doesn't mean it has to be white or just pure gray. So we're gonna work with a lot of different colors. We're gonna do a piece that overall is neutral, but it has a lot of colors in it. Just to give you an idea of what's possible, that you, you can still use a lot of color without going super bright or super bold, um, which is fine if that's your style, but not so good if it's not. We're gonna start by using crinoline by DIY, which is like an a, a, a off-white, it's a cream color. This is gonna be our base. But you can see that I've got a lot of other colors lined up, which I may or may not use. We'll see how we go. I have French Millinery by DIY, which is kind of like a soft, um, it's not a violet, it's not a, what, what would be, I can't think of the, the term, it's not purple. It's like a really soft, um, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like a gray, purple, violet kind of color. We're going to go with French millinery because I can't think of what else it would be. I have Apothecary by DIY, which is one of my faves, which is like this really light green. These two colors look awesome together. Um, I have Gravel Road, which is a legitimate gray. I have Petticoat Pink, which is... A soft pink which also goes well with these and I do have cake batter which is um, in the yellow family obviously but it's kind of like that rich kind of uh, creamy buttery vanilla cakey kind of look and in the back I actually also have duck egg blue by Annie Sloan I love the color I've mixed my own duck egg blue version using the DIY paints but I have, a, I have a whack of it still to use from a client project and I hate letting anything go to waste. So DIY plays really well with other chalk paints, Annie Sloan included. And uh, so don't think that you can't mix and match. Don't think that you can't use um, certain paints together and have them work. So. I thought, I'm not gonna hide from you that I do that because I do that and I invite you to do that. So the first step really is I am just going to get a nice, smooth, solid coat of crinoline onto this before we come back and start talking about how and where we're gonna be using other colors. Hey everybody, we have our coats of crinoline on here and that's gonna be operating as our base color. What's nice about it is it gives kind of a creamy echo up through the other colors. And what I'm looking at now is starting to take a closer look at the piece and deciding on what colors might go where. For this, we're not doing a blended finish, which means each color is gonna be distinct. Here, I'm starting to work on some striping. So I want the French Millinery, which is that soft mauve color, which mauve is the word I couldn't think of. It's not a purple or a lilac, it's mauve. Um, and it's kind of in, in a bit of that muted color tone because I want this to have a little bit of that, 
French provincial or provincial français. Huh? I'm faking that accent. All right, but kind of that French provincial kind of feel to it. It's going to be worn. And for stripes, if they happen to be stripes that are the width of my tape, then I just use one piece of tape to mark it out. And then I line up the other tapes after it. Okay, that's crooked. I was trying to keep my big head out of the way, but I can't do it and get it straight. So I'm going to be painting these stripes and not this little edge and only to the top there. So one of the things, this works as a base, but it might also be a color in our design. So it's kind of working on looking at what color might go where. This is going to be that soft mauve in here, but I could see also using it on the big balls, both here and on the very bottom and this knob here, and then maybe in the center there. So we've got a little bit of continuity happening. It might even be on this rim here. Then what color is this gonna be? What color is this? So we're gonna be having kind of this blocked effect, but this base color may end up being kind of a bit of a, a trim in between things. So here we might have the purple here. This might remain the cream. This could be another color, right? So it might be a bit of a, a lining. Um, we'll see how it goes. So it starts off with thinking about that first color, which might be one of the more dominant colors, and what would be the main pieces that you would paint in that. So I have not decided on the top yet, so I'm, I'm leaving that maybe until I see a little bit of how the base plays out. Because this is all um, kind of molded and formed, it gives me a good idea of places to lay my color. So what I'm going to do first is do my stripes and do the balls. And when I go to do the balls, what I will do is flip the table upside down. They're gonna be easier to paint um, that way. I am armed with a whack of brushes and I'm gonna be using these small brushes to paint all my surfaces because I need to be a little bit more controlled because I'm going to be distressing this afterward. It doesn't have to be perfect because I can just sand a little bit heavier where I have an oops area. But that's in essence where we're going with that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, tape these off. Most of it I'm gonna be doing freehand, but I am taping the stripes off so that they don't look completely wackadoodle. Now that my lines are there, I can safely begin painting and look at that color, right? That's the French millinery. So would you call that mauve? I don't know what other color you'd call it. Mauve, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. But here, oh, and that doesn't help if my tape's not straight. can't talk and do lines at the same time. But I anticipate, because I'm doing this with the DIY paint and it's quite thick, and I'm doing it over a nice solid base, I'm only going to need the one coat. And look at how pretty that's looking already. This is our little table so far. You can see that I put the mauve stripes on with that French millinery and then just the 
kind of obvious balls. I may add more of the mauve. It remains to be seen. I'm just kind of taking it easy, seeing what I need to do that's obvious for a particular color, and then we'll kind of take it from there. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add in the apothecary, which is this pale green color. And I'm thinking for this one, I'm going to do the blocks, and then I may do these big sections as well, which means these sections would, yeah, see, that's not gonna work. <laughs> because then this block down here, you know, we've got the block here would need to uh, happen with it, and this may have to be a different color. See, this is where you start getting into these logistical you don't want to have two sections with the same color beside it. So here, if I had done this in the green, then this block wouldn't work in the green. And now I'm thinking that the mauve needs to be here. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, so you just go for the obvious ones first and then see where it takes you. So I'm just going to paint the front of these and leaving the side of it still in the green in the in the cream and the same thing underneath so i don't want it all and i want to use a bit of that cream base as my kind of like the the grounding color so it's kind of the edging right so it's just Taking your time and doing the hand painting. And this is what I do is I tip this around as I, go, as I just move around and I tip it up in whatever direction I need to to be able to paint the section that I'm painting. So I'm just going to carry on and get that green on there in all of the spaces that make sense. And then we'll come back for the next color. Um, I said I was adding color. <laughs> As so often happens with these, they start to take on a life of their own. I started to put on some of the green and I realized I quite like the crinoline, the cream with the mauve and the green. Not sure about adding any other color in apart from maybe some gold. So, I have painted more in the green than I thought. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit more of the mauve in places. So, I want this little round in between the two greens to be mauve. I'm thinking I'm leaving this cream and I'll leave these creams. So, I'm going to paint the tops down here in the mauve. The sides are in the green. And I think then that that means I'm going to do a green rim here and a green rim just along this edge, leave the cream, and then I'm going to do mauve on top, but I'm thinking more in a pattern. So I have to decide what kind of pattern, which may mean it's going to be green and mauve, and so I don't know. I don't know yet. But... I'm thinking that we're sticking with the three colors. Three colors plus gold, four colors. Um, and sometimes that's what happens, right? I had a bunch of other colors out I was gonna use and now I'm thinking, no, not so much. Plus I wanna heavily distress this, which will also forgive, um, you know, some of my painting, some of my painting choices. So, okay, so I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna get the rest done with some of this and uh, then we'll see what we've got. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you start out with a plan and then you just go with where the piece wants to take you. And I'm thinking, I want a smaller brush for up there. Okay, so a little bit more mauve in a couple spots on the bottom and a little bit more green 
And then I have and then I have to start making some decisions about the top because I'm so not there yet. Here's our little table. You can see, you know, as much as I started out thinking I was gonna be using um, some yellow and some blue in there, it ended up being enough with these three colors and we're gonna be adding some gold. Um, it just started to look too cute to stick with the original plan. And that happens sometimes. You know, as you start getting into a project, you realize, you know, it's enough. So what we have to do still is the top. And what I had thought of is maybe doing like a Harlequin pattern. So I did take all the measurements and thought, okay, I'm gonna cut my own um, perfect little diamond. It's gonna be the right size. And I didn't have a lot of energy beyond that to do that. So I started checking some of my old stencils, and this is one that I got when I was in the States sometime, because I'm in Canada, um, from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale for $3.50. I, I didn't even know what I was going to do with it at any time, but you can't pass up a big stencil for $3.50, even in American dollars. It's only like $5. Um, but I don't want to use all of it. I don't want... Let me see if I can... Here, hold it up so you can see. This is going to be a little too busy. I mean, you know, just with diamonds all across the top, it's not going to be totally sedate, but it is still going to be a little bit more subdued. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the diamond row. And so I'll do one row of diamonds and then I'll lift the stencil and then maneuver it. I wanna put this little diamond in here each time and then start another row of diamonds. So I've got a little bit of futzing to do. It's just gonna be one little row at a time and I'm gonna alternate colors. So I'll do the mauve and then the green and then the mauve on either side, which means then the diamond below this will be green. So I'll alternate them. And these little diamonds I'll do in the gold. So the gold, I am actually going to do with the gold wax, the golden rule, because it's going to be the gold that I add elsewhere. And I don't want to get into two completely different gold colors. So because this is the gold I'll be using for some of the accents after I've distressed, it's going to be the gold that I add in now. Hmm. No, it's going to be the gold that I add in later. I want to distress first. I'm just concerned if I distress over top of this that I'll maybe smear it. Ooh, that was a good thought. Good thought to have before I start doing it. So I'm just going to do all the painting. Then I'll do all the distressing. And then I will have to go back in with my stencil. <laughs> and futz my little, um, my little uh, tiny diamonds. All right. So my idea is a little bit picky, but, but the one thing that I did do is I put tape on the top to mark out where my first one went. So I did do a little bit of measuring to sort of have things centered. So just in case you thought that I didn't, what I did do is I measured, um, you know, my first row of diamonds edge to edge. And I'm thinking that I have this the other way around from how I measured. Yes, there we go. So I did measure little diamond to little diamond to the edges just to make sure that I was sort of centered. I didn't agonize over it to the exact, you know, 16th of an inch, but I did count up the eighths if that matters for anything. So really, I'm gonna have two stencil brushes, two colors going at the same time. Um, so I'll be using different stencil brushes for each. So 
So I've got two stencil brushes here. Um, so I'll use them for separate colors and I will use the lids to offload the color onto. So by that, when I dip my paint in, I have too much paint on that brush. And I am just going to keep it um, minimalistic, meaning, wow, just the minimum amount of paint on my brush, period. I would rather go over it twice than go over it too heavy to begin with and have it leak out and not end up with a nice crisp image. So I am just gonna be spending my life right now lining up diamonds. <laughs> okay, ready for the reveal? Let's see how I did with my first little row. Okay, I don't need this anymore. I will now use these to line up my next diamonds. And I'm just gonna keep on going. Okay, so just thought I'd share. The one thing that I did do to determine how far away I needed the next row of diamonds, and I kind of moved them over so that I'm always stenciling the green in the green and the, and the mauve in the mauve. The one thing that I did was I did measure um, from the edge of the big diamond to the edge of the little diamond, how far apart that was, and that was roughly half an inch. And then I measured what the length of the big diamond was, which is about an inch. So I have positioned my next row to start point to point of the big diamonds two inches apart so that when I add the one inch diamond, I still have a half inch on either side and it's gonna be consistent with them going sideways. I hope that makes sense, um, but it's just going to, it, it makes it then kind of um, consistent in terms of its look. Okay, now I just taped it in place so it doesn't slide around and I keep those measurements and now I just continue stenciling. I have the top done. You can see it looks good, but it's gonna be the little diamonds that really connect everything. So it looks kinda of too spaced out right now, but it'll be, it'll be fine once we add in the rest. What I want to do is get the whole piece sanded. I would like to sand anyway, but I wanna get them all lightly distressed. And this is where if some of my painting wasn't perfect, I get to sort of sand a little bit more and fix it. I'm using 320. I just want, and I'm going to hand sand the whole thing. I'm not getting out the orbital or the little mouse sander. I want to have control over how much um, I'm taking off. And I want it to have a little bit of a worn look to it. So I only have that one layer of the colored paint on, so I should be able to get some nice wear down to that cream undercoating, um, which is gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna get it sanded and wiped down so that I get rid of all this dust. What I will do is um, I will kind of uh, wipe it down dry because I, I don't want any of the colored um, paint getting merge it down into my cream. Kind of defeats the purpose of nice crisp edges if I do that. So I'm gonna get that all done and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna start applying the gold, not just here, I mean this is obvious to do those gold uh, diamonds, but also in other strategic spots on the rest of the piece, but it's really coming together. Um, and I'm just debating I don't want to smear the gold. So I think, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all done and come back. We're going to start waxing and uh, I'm going to use the clear wax because my gold is a gold wax. So I'm going to do that over the top of my clear wax just so I don't get any of it smeared. Right now, I'm just going to create a ton of dust. It was all sanded. I've got it wiped down and you can see 
that it's still all there, but it's kind of worn. You can see some of the edging, see some of the cream coming through exactly what I was looking for. Now, I need to get this sealed. So I'm gonna be using DIY clear wax. I thought that I didn't have a new one open, but I had a new one open. And I'm just using a chip brush. So you could use a wax brush, but a chip brush works perfectly well as well. So there are times that you need a really good brush and there are times that it just doesn't matter. So, you know, save your money for the times that it does. If you've got the money for a good wax brush, then definitely use it. But I like to, sh and I have a wax brush, but I like to show you guys, you know, places where, you know, it's not gonna make a huge difference for you. And especially for something like this, where I can just work it in. And I tend to have different chip brushes on the go for different waxes. So I will use one exclusively for my white, one exclusively for my clear, one for my brown, black, turquoise, just so that none of the colors that would still stay in those fibers kind of mix. I mean, I certainly don't want to go from black to clear. Um, that's just... That's going to be a recipe for disaster. So, you know, if you're investing in a really good wax brush, then I suggest that you would use that solely for your clear. And um, don't risk kind of any of the other colors getting muddied up. Now, what I will do is get the wax all on the entire piece and before it has a chance to dry, I will take a clean, not the dusty one, a clean um, lint-free cloth and I will wipe it all down to get the excess off. It's going to mean that it dries faster, it's gonna dry smoother, and it's gonna help me see if there's some places that I missed that I need to go back over with some wax. And that's fine, you can wax on your wax, you could put extra coats. You could let the first coat dry and then add another one for extra protection. A couple of months from now, if you decide, oh, I've been using this table a lot, I'd like to add another coat, go ahead. Okay, so I can feel that this chip brush, which is well worn, look how rusty that is, look at how the <laughs> bristles are gone. It's probably on its last legs only because it's really loose here, so it's uncomfortable in my hand. So I will use it on the rest of this piece. And then this chip brush is done. It will, it will get tossed. But I can't begin to tell you how many times I've used it. And for like a $2 purchase, money well spent. Now that this is all waxed, I am just going to be putting my stencil back over top and just kind of laying it out where I can see that it's already been on. And then I'm gonna take my gold wax and I'm gonna to start to stencil in my little tiny diamonds. So again, I'm gonna use my lid just to offload so that I don't have too much just want those nice faint and, and the golden rule is not a really um, not a really opaque wax it's got a nice translucency to it that I love and I want to take advantage of that on this because I don't want the gold to be stronger than the colors themselves I want it to have kind of that light look so you can see very distinct, but it's not gonna overpower anything. Looking at the top with the little diamonds in there, with the little gold, I will say this turned out better than if I was gonna make my own stencil. I had planned on having all of these colored diamonds touching, and I really like the spacing. I like having the little bit of gold floating in there so it ties them all together, but it looks a lot lighter and brighter. In retrospect, I'm thinking that if I had the diamonds, even in these sort of soft pastel colors, it would end up being too heavy 
on the top and um, wouldn't have gone with the piece as well. So happy, happy about that. Now, what I wanna do is add a little bit more gold in places. So because this is translucent, you could put it over color if you wanted. So you could put it over any of the other colors. Because I've already started on the top, putting it just over the cream, I'm gonna carry on with that. And really, I'm not looking at adding tons. I may do it on just some of the edging. I had debated putting it on each of these rounds, right? Leaving some plain cream. I haven't decided yet, but I am gonna go and add a little bit in particular, this rim right here. I want that whole rim to be gold. And that will kind of help me decide where else it's going. I am starting to think that I'll do down here because it looks a little lost and lonely, give it a little bit more depth to it. And then I may do that around the ball on either end as well. So I may pick one of these and do those in gold too. So I'm gonna get a smaller paint brush to be able to spread it on a little bit better than I could with my fingers. As I'm working on this, I just wanted to point out a couple things. I wanted a brush that wasn't too, too soft so I could control where it goes. And the beauty of doing this while your clear wax is still wet, so this hasn't cured overnight, is that if I get it all over, I have the opportunity to kind of get a little bit more clear wax and erase it. So I'm very conscious of trying not to touch my little diamonds <laughs> so that they don't disappear on me. Um, but when I'm doing some of this detail work like this trim, it works great because if I all of a sudden sneeze <laughs> and I draw a line across it, I have a better hope of being able to clear it off. So I'm just gonna carry on painting on some of these details, but you'll see what I'm talking about that you can see this going on, but it's not gold. It's a lot uh, more subtle. And same thing with those diamonds. They fit into the piece a little bit better. I will take some pics for you so that you can see but oh look at the look at the sheen on it from that buffing now you could buff by hand you could use the buffing brush um, I just I have this little Milwaukee one which is awesome I use a bigger Simonized car one for bigger pieces bigger surfaces but I love this because I'm able to maneuver it in around the different grooves but if you're doing this by hand, and I have done that um, with this, I will take my clean cloth and I will simply do this. And then I will flip it around. Sorry, get my leg here to hold this. And I will do this. Sort of like shining shoes, but uh, it's the easiest way. And man, if you've got spindle chairs or something like that, do this. <laughs> Good workout. <laughs> but... It works great for being able to get into all those different little grooves and things too, if you're having to buff out your piece. But uh, I love this finish. I'm glad that we stuck with the, um, uh, just kind of the tones that we did. It uh, makes it look a little less busy because this is fairly intricate down here, but it really highlights the details. I'll definitely take some close up pics to be able to show you how it turned out. And I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of the transformation of this and it gives you some ideas on how to add some little details to some of your pieces perhaps. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm Cindy Daychuk, queenbeecreationshome.com for the website if you want to check out this or any of the other furniture pieces or home decor and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.